Alrighty, so there's the project. Oh yeah, some of you were saying that this new template I've got going on on the screen was making Logic a bit small. Um, I went, Macaque went back and uh, redid it. So hopefully this is now good. How are we doing for size? I mean, if not, I can pretty much just mute it and just make Logic the whole screen. I just don't think it looks as good and I hate how like when the YouTube rips come, it kind of like has the text over Logic and I don't know. I just feel like it is a bit better. Still a bit small, to be honest. Well, it is zoomed out all the way as well. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in. But how's that? Like, if I'm if I'm doing stuff on the screen, you can see that, can't you? Still small. Still small. <laughs> uh, okay. Text is messed up. It's better, but not good enough. All right, sorry, Macaque. We'll we'll lose this for now. Then let me just do a little little change of Um, damn, I really like having it separate, but people have spoken. Um, okay, okay. How can I do this? We need that to be there. Be a bit bigger. Here I am. We need display capture. Also bigger. Fit to screen. And then we need stupid chat to just that. See, that's what I hate. I hate how the chat is just in the way. Whatever. Is that what you want? Is that better? I got no border or anything. Well, maybe, maybe I do actually. Maybe I've still got my fancy border, energy border. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'll just get Macaque to freshen up the borders of things or something. And then we'll be good. Rather than doing like a template style thing. Not the way to go. There we go. Is that nice and neat? Oh, I feel like the text is overlapping a little bit. So there we go. Text is still... Well, I can't do anything about that. Well, I mean, I'm going to get into it. We're going to, you know, like zoom in on shit like that. Um, nothing I can do about the text. This is what it is. I guess I can make everything bigger on a MacBook, but yeah. Sorry. Clean machine. This is better. My post getting in the way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's nothing I can do about the ratio of the screen. So that is just what it is. If I make it any bigger, it'll probably just... Well, I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try it. Maybe I can... Maybe I can kind of... I'm worried this is going to screw up everything. So... Scaled. Default. Fingers crossed. Whoa. Is that good? I feel like it's the same. Oh my god, my Streamlabs is like mental now. <laughs> um, help. It looks the same. Yeah, yeah, it looks the same. Default. Always default. Cool. All right. Um, let us begin. So yeah, this is never enough um, with everything kind of collapsed oh, down. Shit. Oh, let's start that again then. Alexi Wonka, welcome with seven people. Um, all right, I'm going to intro this properly because this is going to end up on YouTube and shit. So, you know, we want it to be, we want it to be slick. <clears throat> um, maybe I'll go on this camera, actually. Yeah, here we go. Okay, everybody, welcome. We are going to do a breakdown today of Never Enough. Um, we released an EP a couple of months ago. Lead track was called Never Enough. And... Money. As voted for by you guys, we are going to break it down. So, here we go. So, here we have it. Um, similar template to well, everything I do. A couple other like little features that you might not recognize, um, especially this down here. This is actually the finished song, um, which I sort of played out of my SSL console that I've got here through some outboard gear and recorded back into my Apollo. So that's literally just like the pre-pre-master, if you know what I mean. No, no, that is the pre-master, actually, yeah. 
like everything you're hearing here is raw audio, which would have gone out of the interface through my nice like SSL fusion box and through this SSL six with a compressor and some EQ and whatever. And then I just record it straight back into itself. So that file down there is actually what I sent off for mastering. Um, so we can just pretty much hide that to be honest. You don't need to see that. I'll, I'll play it at the end, see if you can hear the differences of, of the hardware maybe. Um, but yeah, this is what you need to see mainly. We got drums, so drum bus. Um, not loads going on with the drums, like not not really anything that you've not seen before, to be honest. Um, it's pretty much my go-to sounds. Um, big kick on the kick. Um, recorded in some claps. Um, there is a break that's sort of leading the way on most of it. Um, so that's sort of, I think the break came first and then I've messed around with it and reversed some bits and then I've sort of merged it all together. A couple of vocal sample stabs. Um, some sweeps, LFOs, a couple of tambourines, and so on. So we'll come back to that. Um, the vocal bus is where the magic is. That is where we got a lot of stuff going on. We've got Howard, which is kind of all of this stuff. Um, the vocal was, was pretty much Howard um, sending me stuff remotely. Um, I think he actually recorded them in here in my house while I was in Miami um, and sent them over. So then I've sort of gone through them and organized them, probably given them a little bit of tune here and there. Oh, in fact, I gave them a load of pitch correction because we wanted it to sound like a robot. Um, so we'll get into that. But the coolest part about the whole project is this stuff down here, which is um, gospel choir. So we've got gospel choir on this song. Um, so yeah, lots of dope things to go through there. Um, which we'll come to later. Um, you've got a synth bus, which is pretty busy as well. A lot of outboard gear, um, hardware, I mean, on this tune. Um, you've got, yeah, look, I mean, you've only got a couple of MIDI instruments here and here. The rest is all um, is, is all, all hardware. Um, I should say I, I, I began this beat without Howard. I actually began the beat with my good friend Andy, a.k.a. Luxury. Um, and we were writing in Essex. I think we did a couple of streams from there. You guys probably remember. Um, and yeah, during that period is where we sort of started the basis for this whole EP. Um, so yeah, any sort of hardware synths that you see in this project, like these beeps, beeps insane, <laughs> beeps insane. I think we all know which bit that is. Um, yeah, the bass as well, substantial bass. Um, that is all Andy playing in stuff on a synth like my Andromeda or Pro oh, the Juno. The Juno is all over this tune, um, Juno 106, and me messing with them as he played. And we just got a take of, you know, loads of loads of stuff. And then I've kind of gone through it and all and selected bits that I like. Like if I pull out any, um, oh, I think I've, uh, yeah, I've gone through it and deleted it all. If I go back to a hidden track, there's probably, yeah, there's like lots of hidden audio in here of, of stuff that we recorded and bounced out or went through carefully and chose. Um, so yeah, it's a very hardware based track, which is um, not the norm for disclosure stuff or d disclosure stuff of old, I should say, but it is much more common these days. I do like to kind of get a vibe going in the room, whether it's with my Roland Boutique stuff or the Peak or yeah, Andromeda, Juno, the Moog, whatever. Um, and when you got someone like Andy in the room, who's a sick keyboard player, um, and he's really good at extracting weird sounds out of my own synths that I don't even know how to use, <laughs> um, he's like, he's the guy. So you just hit record. That's why you know that, that's probably why the whole tune started with a break, to be honest, because I would have just thrown in a a drum loop, you know, something I've been saving for a while. Uh, this thing, and we would have just jammed around it for ages. So, yeah, the stuff you see remaining in this window is. 10 seconds of like a half an hour mess around um, on one synth. Um, so yeah, we got a couple MIDI things still left over, but even that I think is like a sample of a synth or whatever. Oh, and basic pad. Yeah, I don't know. And then here I've, I've got some like granular, granular vocals too. Um, so you may, that is actually a real hidden gem of the track that probably not many of you have even noticed. Uh, but it's in there so <clears throat> we will get to that and I'll show you how I made it as well because that's quite a cool bit um, there was even some guitar on this tune at one point here played by Connor Albert I believe because Connor was uh, there when we started this tune um, he also 
I think believe I, I believe he made these chords here, which were originally one of the main bits of the tune was this like kind of big ravey piano. Um, but we ended up taking it out because the vocal took precedent and was kind of so busy and forward that it, we didn't need all this harmony information. Um, but the, the the melody of the harmony is kind of loosely based on the chords, I guess. Um, so anyway, kind of we ended up cutting him into the publishing anyway, because although nothing he played and ended up on the final mix, like he was a hundred percent like a part of like the initial blooming of the beat and the tune and the vibe. So um, yeah, he was just a really good guy to have in the room. Like when we were getting this going, it's one of the first things we made, I think, um, during that time. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, very good times. And then we got a bunch of, a bunch of plugins to go through some serious plugins here on the beeps. Um, I went to fucking town on the beeps. Uh, the vocals too, there's a lot going on my mix bus, which you've all seen before. We'll go through some cool stuff going on on the bass. Um, so yeah, any questions before we get going? Um, played by Prince. Yeah, we called it Prince because of the the vibe of the the guitar. I'll play you it in a bit. Um, could someone explain how, to me how to connect a digital piano to an audio interface? USB, probably. Um, am I single? No, I am engaged. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> um, What's it like being independent thus far? Great. Yeah. I mean, so never enough, the EP, we did a, a distribution deal with Universal, um, which basically means, you know, they just sort of do the physical copies like the vinyl and the CDs and whatever, um, and give it a bit of promo. And, you know, they license the tunes off us basically. And then after a certain amount of time pass, we retain all the rights to the masters. So just feels like fair is the best way of describing it. Just kind of fair. Everyone getting their cut for the work they did. Um, feels good and it's nice to be able to just choose when to do whatever we want you know if we want to do an EP we do an EP if we want to do a single we want to do a single if we do an album do an album but there's no like alright in your contract you got an album left over you got to do an album <laughs> we can just choose to do whatever we like well, that, that's definitely the nicest bit um, for sure did you get the new MacBook yet? no this is my old uh, 2019 Mac still, still going fine uh, it looks good though. I'm excited about having an HDMI port on the Mac. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Vinyl when? Um, there's a massive backlog at the factories at the moment because um, of COVID basically. So keep you updated on that. Uh, I think the DJ Kicks vinyl is looking like it is coming soon. Thank God. Um, but yeah, never enough vinyl. Like we're talking next year. We're, we are, we're pretty much talking next year. So that kind of sucks. Uh, DJ Kicks Vinyl Ships 26th of November. There you go. Yeah, I think that is looking good. So that's cool. Um, is my wife single? That's a dumb question, bro. Um, she's also not my wife. So probably won't answer any more questions from you. <laughs> so excited about HDMI. Yeah. You want to hang at Glastonbury next year? Yeah, probably. I'm, I'll just be out and about like everyone else. Jamie A, did you sack off any other even crazier beeps no those were the most insane beeps um i mean if i extend it out i think there is like no no those were the most insane beeps i'll show you how i made them when we get there um how did you decide on the length of the tune same way i decide on every length of tune really just like it's just a total instinct instinct feeling just Use your intuition. When it feels done, it's done. Ask a few people's opinion that you trust to. You know, if I've got Howard going, like, feels really long, man. This section feels unnecessary. Um, you know, cut it down. Uh, we, you know, sometimes I do two versions too. Like, you do a short one for Spotify and to put the long one on Beatport for the DJs to play. But I think with Never Enough, we just, we did one for everything because there wasn't really much that needed trimming. And it's a club EP. You know, I wasn't really looking to make radio length songs. We were looking for, like, a, a tune that you can play in a club. Um, but my, my favorite thing about this tune for sure is just like the gospel choir because that was a first for us was using a gospel choir on a tune especially like making uh, Howard made the MIDI for that and like sort of the voicings of where we wanted it to go and then I sent them the stems of Howard's harmonies individually as well and got and you know they just pretty much assigned a voice to each assigned a note movement to each person I think it was a six piece choir and um 
shout out to Paddy as well. Paddy, who's sort of in charge of conducting the choir and notating it all. He used to sing uh, BVs for Sam Smith in Sam's band. Um, so we've been on tour with him. Loads. Good guy. Uh, he smashed this for us because I was in Miami. Howard's in London. He was somewhere else. Each member of the choir was somewhere else. Like this was during, you know, kind of lockdown still. So it was really difficult to get it done, but he nailed it. And um, yeah, once we got sent the parts back, I was just like, oh, yeah, that's just the icing on the cake that's going to really elevate these vocals to a new level. <clears throat> Can you give any insight on the Dolby Atmos version of Never Enough? Yeah, I mean, I basically sent the stems to uh, a Dolby Atmos guy and he kind of did the mix for me, to be honest. Um, I wasn't as involved in these ones. I just didn't have time. Um, but I've checked them on like binaural headphones. I don't have an Atmos studio here where I can really hear it. Um, but I am getting more involved with Atmos, especially since the new update of Logic means I can mix in Atmos now at home so if i was to buy myself you know a little mini atmos system i could do them myself i have done them before and i really enjoy doing them and i think my first big project will be um in a couple of years when settle the first album turns 10 i would like to do an atmos mix myself of every song and like remix it and master it and all that just as like a special edition um so i'm a fan i think it's cool i, I like experiencing tunes in atmos um but for this exact one yeah it wasn't me um, but I did produce a mix and even help master every other version. <laughs> like the thing you're about to hear tonight is, you know, it's, is exactly what we put out as it is with every tune that, I, that we do basically. Big kick. What patch do you start with? I just have my go-to patch, man. Um, I'll show you it in a sec. I always start with a similar one, tweak the attack, tweak the tuning, um, tweak the sample that I lay over the top, you know? Do you, Disclosure, keep doing lives here in Twitch even after pandemic end? Uh, I mean, I'm here right now. So, yeah, I guess. But it's not really ended, has it? It's going to be, it's going to not end. It's going to be going on forever. Like how illnesses do that. They're always around, you know. How many on stream songs have you finished off stream and are hyped about? Oh, man, I don't even know. Um, well, there was one on the DJ Kicks mix, Deep Sea. I think that started on a stream. So that came out. I was excited about that one. A bunch. Yeah, I've just got a, so much, so many beats now just to play people in sessions. Um, but it's all top secret, so can't really say. <laughs> How'd you get in touch with the Gospel Choir? Uh, oh yeah, I kind of explained through Sam Smith's backing singer, Paddy. Good guy. You sold your Juno 106 for 350 quid in 1992. Damn, that sucks, man. <laughs> a few thousand now, right? Maybe, actually, I don't know. Maybe a few hundred. Maybe a few thousand. Shit. Yeah, my, my Juno 106 was my uncle's. I found it in his attic. So take the wins when they come. <laughs> Definitely couldn't have afforded one when we started. Will you be doing local sets when you get to LA? Uh... I, I don't local set well like a show in LA no no probably not not till next year anyway we're doing a US tour next year details on the way soon um alright cool that seems to be all the questions now we're just chatting so I will oh have you considered music for games that's so funny because I got an announcement about something game related soon so Yes, I have strongly considered it. <laughs> I'll let you know details um, as and when. All right, here we go. All right, so where do we want to start? Drums, synths, bass, or vocals? Let's do a little poll. Then we can do it in the order of the poll. Drums, bass, synths, vocals. Someone set that up. Don't type it. You just just wait a minute. You just gotta wait for the poll, and then we'll all we'll all do it there. What shall we break down first? I feel like we need some cheesy music to go with this. I don't really have any. I guess I have. Ooh. 
Okay, cool. Um, I think we end the poll there. I make that drums, vocals, synths, bass. So that is the order. Oh, wow. They've all suddenly like matched up perfectly, which is, doesn't, doesn't help me. Oh, there we go. Wow, that was really close. Drums, vocals, synths, bass. All right, cool. We will begin with drums. Here's the drum bus. Um, I've taken all the plugins off the output. No, I haven't. Let's take them all off. Well, at first, actually, we should just have a little quick blast of the tune so we all know what we're talking about, because maybe some of you haven't heard it. Um, so I will jump to, like, here. Oh, damn. I didn't think about that. Yeah, this project is insanely, <laughs> insanely busy. Damn. Okay, yeah, I need to... Uh, I need to delete some stuff. Um, yeah, especially some soothes. Let's get rid of some soothes. Um, or and just generally like stop things happening. Um, dab chords. Yeah, you're all right. Hold. Yeah, you should be off. I need that guitar. Turn you off. Granular vocals, yeah, that's probably not doing much. What are we on here? <laughs> Massive. Okay. Um. Yeah, to be honest, we probably like will just get latency issues going on because like I'm doing stream labs at the same time um so but it's fine when we solo oh the limiter's still on as well that's definitely gonna not help that might make a huge difference yeah it's, it's just gonna happen to be honest um when I bounced this out it was pretty peak look at all this stuff man it's stupid Money. so much going on um but yeah, if we just solo bits one by one, we should be all right. Um, that's not going to help. Oh, it's not even doing anything. No. I think that's quite intensive on the CPU. Oh, we got another soothe on the drum bus. Get rid of that. Yeah, everything's going to sound just a little bit less uh, <laughs> less soothed. But at least we can play the song. That was probably on a super high setting as well. Yeah, I've changed that before the stream. Cool. It is, it is weirdly high, to be honest. I don't usually... Let me delete a lot of hidden stuff. This is nothing you haven't seen before, guys. It's just like my template, you know, that's not doing anything. So I'm not deleting any hidden gems. Oh, there are some beeps there, some secret beeps. There you go. Deleting some stuff. Deleting some stuff. Yeah, Diva's on. I don't need any of that. Sneaky beeps. Ableton bus. Yeah, you know, I don't need any of that. Okay, so if <laughs> still pretty Larry. <laughs> Let's see what happens if we jump to here. <laughs> Peak. Very peak. Yes. Um, all right. What I could do is freeze some tracks, but then I don't think you can open the plugins. So I, could, I wouldn't be able to like show you stuff. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. It's going to be the vocals that are doing it mostly. Um, I'll take off this soothe. It doesn't do much at, the, at this stage. Oh, wow. There's so many like, there's so many wideners. Look at that! I got ozone. I got ozone wideners on every vocal. That is 
so heavy. Um, anyone else see any soothes? <laughs> any secret soothes? Ah, uh, yeah, now it's going to go out of time because I took Soothe off. The way it goes. Damn it! Okay, um... I mean, it's... Well, what if I put it in eco mode? Does that help? <laughs> I mean, barely. All right, well... I will probably freeze these vocals except for the lead and then you can sort of see at least what some of the plugins are doing. You won't be able to, I won't be able to show you like every plugin on every track, but I mean they're pretty much the same. So as long as we've got one free, then it should be fine. Let me freeze that. <clears throat> probably take about two minutes. Um, maybe I need to get an M1. <laughs> I'm really pushing the boundaries of this project. Usually I find though with these projects, there's there's usually just like one track that's making the CPU go completely mental. And as soon as you freeze that or mute it or turn it off, it all gets like instantly better. It's just trying to find which track is being like the one. And also like since doing this project, I've probably updated my Mac. I think Logic updated too. And all those things always make everything worse. Um, like I never update my Mac mid project, but we're not we're not mid project anymore. So, it's been a minute. I haven't got much battery either, which probably doesn't help. <laughs> I basically didn't prepare for the stream in any way. Um, but yes, this will help for sure, once it's frozen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm going to get that in one soon, for sure. Waiting soundtrack. Um... How about this one? This is a real throwback. Who was there for this? Old school. <laughs> that was Howard's Ravenclaw theme. Weird guy. This was an iconic era of streams. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. Agreed. <laughs> what songs do you want to do for upcoming breakdowns? I'll probably do some others off the EP. Probably do like Happening and in My Arms. In My Arms is a cool one vocally. It's pretty mega. There's a lot of harmonies on there. There's some cool harmonies on here too. Jordan Sliverin, sick mate. Me too. Me too. Alright, let's see if that helps. If not, we're just going to have to deal with it. No, it did not help in any way. It's enough to get by. It's never enough. No, this is this is enough. All right, cool. Let us begin with the drums. So here's a little blast of just the drums with the side chains turned on. Starting with the kick. So you can see like the whole thing's built around this break here. Um, that's like pretty much the first thing I threw in to the session. Kind of does the same thing for a few little fills here and there. That's, that's the main vibe. Um, so I'm going to turn all the plugins off the drum bus. Are those already off as well? Yes. Don't need that either. Um, so here's actually how the break started. I, I think I have already processed that a bit. Um, like I think there is another. Yeah, I deleted the track. There, there was a much more like full on version of the break with like, and um, this file here is a a bounce down that I've done of that that's already chopped. Um, so it used to look like many regions and now it's just this one region because you can hear like I've EQ'd it and uh, 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what it does the whole time. Um, so first thing I'm doing is overdrive. And then I'm doing transient master, taking off some sustain. And another one, which is making it really snappy, like if I bypass. And then put them in. Just tightening it up loads. Um, that's all going through this EQ, which is pretty crazy. Um, boosting some like mids and some super highs, taking out some resonance here, scooping out the low, like low, low mids, high lows. I don't know, low mids. And that's the end result. So without quite like boxy sounding, you know, not very clear. Yeah, like this resonance here. No one needs that. That's all that tinnitus area. Um, and you can see here I'm doing some um, automation with those um, with those transient masters. And that's what's really helped building it up. So I'm actually boosting the sustain by 32. And at the moment it's on like minus 100. So you'll hear the difference. Um, I just find this like a really useful technique for just really like pushing... Um, energy and put build, like building up you know the energy because it just makes all of like the space in the sample come back and then you cut it out like a gated reverb or something. oh god damn it that's gonna happen sorry guys what if i do that does that help Yeah, you get the vibe. It's like just sort of building up, building up, and then it cuts out all of the all the crap. Um, I've put a limiter on there too, which I don't usually do that. Yeah, there's just that one snare every first time that was just had a horrible transient on it, so I just took out that little pop. See those red lines? It literally only does it on the first snare, and I was like, why is the first snare not matching the others? So I just chopped it. Uh, yeah, just a couple pops out that I was like, save ourselves like 4 dB if we just chop that little bit off. No one's going to notice. So that's the break. Um, that's like really yeah, where, the, where everything began. Um, I've layered some claps over that. I honestly like couldn't tell you if that was hand clap studio or real claps, but either way, they've been bounced down into this one file of just sort of panned claps, bit of overdrive, bit of EQ. That is usually how I EQ hand clap studio. To be honest, I take out some of the super highs, boost the mids. So it's it's probably probably hand clap studio by Robotic Bean, which is a sweet plugin. Um, my alert box is in a weird place. Let me move it. There we go. Um, so, yeah, that's like the kind of more like vibey instrumental part of the drums. And now we get into the kick and the weight underneath it. So you can see I've got some automation on the release. Really short, like... 40 millisecond kick and then oh and then it suddenly like opens up and boom 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 you know so it's still punchy it's not really like a subby kick it's like nothing you you'd never use that in like a hip hop tune or something with boom boom you know it's a very like i like my kicks very short and punchy because it leaves room for loads of sub and my god is there a lot of sub in this tune so it really it really didn't need a very like big kick although the name is uh deceptive like the length of the entire kick um is what's that 40 milliseconds hold 84 it's like 120 milliseconds of kick which is like boom boom you know it's not boo, 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 like you get an edm you know where it's just a massive kick the whole time like that is fun but i just need a little pop you know just a little 
bit of weight down there, 100 hertz. So that's what you're getting. Um, there's also like a kind of acoustic kick over the top. That's providing, you know, the clicky details. So if I just... So yeah, two kicks in this song. Big kick doing the thump. And then this one over the top. And and they're literally like a match of each other. They're, they're literally just copy and pasted the MIDI. I've probably got this kick sitting a little tiny bit, like just before the beat, as I usually do. Um, nope. Nope, it's actually bang on. No change at all. So yeah, you put that together with the break and you get this. That's that. Um, moving on, we've got battery here. What's battery doing? It's probably 909 stuff. Yeah. Loads. Oh my God. I went so in on this 909 open hi hat. I think it's probably the most like detailed, the most time I've ever spent on a 909 hi hat was in this tune. Like, there is not a note in this song that I didn't choose myself, the length. Like, there is not a single note that's the same length. And it's because I wanted it all to be just sound like it was jammed like there's literally no pattern to it every single one is long and then there's some triplets and the velocity is doing like the uh volume the length of the note is the length of like you know and a lot of that's played in but a lot of it is <laughs> drawn in as well and it's honestly throughout the whole song like there's not a single loop in this tune um so i'm i'm pretty look at that overlapping just goes over the entire bar um, and that was because I really wanted it to sound like a live. I wanted the whole like 909 to just sound thumping and like it was just being messed with. And I kind of was messing with it the whole way through, you know, played it in straight and then really brought it to live afterwards. How do you have time to do that? Well, making music for my job, mate. So I only have time for this. <laughs> that's literally all I do, you know, um, that's, that's my thing. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, even these like... These claps, uh, whatever you call it, a rim. It's just one rim in Never Enough. Um, and it's pretty, it's a pretty thumping rim. So here's what battery's doing. Uh, oh, there is a little. Is there a little clap there I heard? Yeah. So there's another like 909 clap, which is doing. Some of the more like spacious reverby stuff. Um, I actually used Chroma Verb for this um, by Logic, which has one of the best like visualizers for a reverb I've ever seen. Like, check this thing out. How cool is that? If you increase the amount, like the thing does the thing. Oh, and if you press freeze, I think it pretty much just goes. Look at that mate logic I'm telling you it's got a, it's got a lot of good good benefits <laughs> apart from system overload um all right so that's what battery's doing there it is with the break and with the kicks yes uh a couple more things to go i added in um a couple of like vocal shouts, um, splice, splice samples, like these sort of hip hop acapella things. Uh, uh, uh. You know, that sort of thing. Like, really subtle. Uh, uh. So they just sort of give the drums a bit of a human touch, you know? that little yeah 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 um i think i've used those samples before in a stream um but yeah they're like my go-to kind of just need like a person in the drums you know just making it sound a bit more human um you got some sweeps here uh i don't know what the lfo is might be me like with the monotry but it's probably a sample
I honestly don't remember what that is. It may have been me and Andy messing with an LFO on a synth, or it might be a sample. I, from the length of it, I'm going to guess it was me, because I don't don't usually download massive long build-ups like that. But it might be. This is definitely uh, just a splice, like white noise. Psh, I use it all the time. It's literally just... Psh. So that, yeah, that's a useful little impact tool. There's no, like, symbols or anything, I don't think, on this song. Um, oh, maybe there is. There's a lot more battery stuff going on here. Let's unmute that. Yeah, the 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 psh is the symbol, really. Um, yeah, there's like a, a ride symbol that comes in. Yeah, man, there's just stuff going on the whole time in this tune, like whether it's an effect on the drum bus itself, like see all this, I got, I've just done like so much editing everywhere, <laughs> like filters on the breakdown. Reverb and stuff, but there's just little moments throughout the whole thing, like even the... um the reverb on the clap that's a really interesting one so just that that single 909 clap you hear in every now and again the reverb on that i'm like i think i'm eqing it or something like is that inside the reverb damping eq yeah yeah so it, that's why I, I chose the logic reverb because you, you've got this really nice like um eq inside it that's much more detailed than you get on like a valhalla eq or like a you know an old vintage model of a reverb so you know you might not like the sound as much but like you cannot do this with valhalla it's just not possible here moving So yeah, it's kind of like a filter reverb thing and you can see I just pretty much drag and clicked that with the mouse. Um, and that is happening under the drums. You probably don't even notice it when you listen to it as a standout part, but like it is happening. Um, yeah, so another little detail. Also with the 909 hat, I've got some stuff going on here as well. Um, I am automating. I've got a ring shifter on there, which is like a logic uh, frequency modulator. Um, that's doing some build ups just on a hi hat, um, which I don't usually go to this level of detail, but. Hear that? And I've got a delay on there as well. Timeless 2 by Fab Filter. Um, that's just down here, see, just literally doing some delay build up. So there's like lots of different things all doing their own style of build up at the same time to equate to like a riser, basically. So instead of just like, you know, dragging in a riser from Splice, um, which I've done as well, but like on top of that, you know, there's a ring shifter building up, a reverb building up, a filtered reverb on the clap two tambourines that sort of randomly come in before the beat for no reason. And it all just sort of adds up to create these really weird moments where you think the music's going to come in and it just doesn't. And I was really consciously thinking of about the, the phrase of never enough and trying to get that feeling in of like, oh, it's not quite there. Like, where's the drop? Like nothing drops on beat one in this song. Nothing comes in where you expect it. Things drop out all the time. It's just not quite like it never sits easy. It never just goes one, two, three, four, bang. It's always messing around with you. And that was, I was really sort of trying to take the meaning of Howard's tune into that. Because when I first did these drums, it was all very much just four to the floor. And then the never enough stuff went in. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I'm going to do the most drum fills and the most takeaways and, um, you know, kind of trolling the listener that I can do to give it that feeling of, uh, 
wanting more. The lyric is, it's never enough. I always leave wanting more. So to try and get that into the music um, was quite important to me. Uh, where's it dropped to that? Just to give you a sense of the what I'm talking about. Here you go. Two, three, four. Huh. You know, that's just one example. It does this over and over again. One, two, three. Doom, 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 doom. And like, not a single one is the same. I made sure like every single one is different. It never comes in the same. You got that one. This one you got. Uh, how's that one go? Doom, 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 doom. Another triple. I think there's a triple here. That one is kind of similar. I'll grant you that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, ma the main bulk of it and the drops, you know things just disappear and come and go and it's it's all very uneasy you know and that's just the drums that that sort of thing is happening in the beeps it's happening in the bass um so yeah there's a top tip if you've got like a real main phrase in the vocal and you want to try and get that into the beat somehow just try and try and take it a bit literal sometimes i take it too literal and how is like that you don't need that man like that's a bit it's a bit lame. Like, you know, if you've made a song called, like, I don't know, Bonfire, and you just put the sound of a bonfire in, maybe that's a bit bait. I don't know. But, yeah, there are subtle things you can, go, can do that, like, probably you guys didn't even notice and no one will, but, like, I know it's there, and that gives me great satisfaction to know that, like, I have a reason for every single thing I did, you know, in the tune. There's, like, a per everything serves a purpose. And, uh, you know, whether it's just for me like and Howard the artists or for you guys I don't care <laughs> it makes me feel good and it's a fun experiment and if you're if you're like you know lacking for direction of what to do with the beat perhaps um yeah looking to the lyrics is always like a pretty cool idea um whether it's like you know you want to put a soundscape underneath it of uh, some nature sounds or a city or you want to you know start really changing with the rhythm of something or I don't know sometimes if you've got a lot of times when you make a tune, the lyrics come up after you've made a beat, for sure. So you want to go back and change things. But if you've already got a lyrical idea in your mind, then quite cool to sort of try and get that into the beat. Um, would be a top tip for what it's worth. Um, anything else interesting in the drums? I don't think so. A couple tambourines. They are bloody good tambourines. Um, I recorded these myself um i think they i think they're the same tambourine but i just recorded them at different speeds so i used like the vary speed feature here so i recorded one at like and another one at and so when you speed that up it kind of like you know they match up it's a very like common tambourine trick to do no i don't know actually maybe they're different I, I remember playing, I, I went to Guitar Center in Miami and I bought a couple of tiny tambourines. So, yeah, really tight, really swung. Um, yeah, little stops again like that. Just little, just little moments to make it a bit special. Got some transient masters on there, which are also tightening them up. If I take those off, yeah, very rattly. I personally like it a bit tighter than that. So, whoa. Put those on. Um, all right, I'll try and play all the drums together, but it's yeah, it's been a bit of a, it's been a bit difficult. Well, you kind of heard them anyway, but. Yeah, there's some of the, the automation. So all the drums go through the drum bus, and they go through compression tape saturation eq and a limiter and then they get sent from bus 10 to bus 15 which is this bus which i'm just kind of using as an effects bus so this has got another eq on it but it, i'm just using it as a filter like it's not actually like boosting or subtracting anything it's just doing a filter and a reverb so the whole drum kit's going through a reverb unit and an eq which i'm using like you would use on a dj effects mixer you know you would build the reverb up take out the bass whatever i'm just using my dj brain for these drums basically and filtering them around and messing around with them.
got a nice bit of pre-delay on there, which is going like instead of it's going like see, and I think it changes. Yeah, you hear that? It's getting like faster and faster. Yeah, I was just, I was really trying to find different ways to make a build up feel build up y without just sticking a big on there or, you know, the obvious ways of doing it. Using things like reverb and space and. EQ and filters, you know, simple stuff, but that I would, you know, stuff that you try and kind of do when you're DJing. I was like, I'll just put that in the track. So it's done. <laughs> and it does what I want it to do. Um, here's the... Yeah. Uh, any questions on the dr oh you probably want to hear it with the with the plugins so uh, if I can get it to not uh, not explode so that is it plain and here it is with all of the bus plugs without see that look we're peaking at three point minus three point nine and it sounds not that fat. With the plugins. Fatness achieved, peaking at minus eight. So that's a combination of compression, saturation, and limiting all working together subtly um, on the drum bus there to bring that peak level down, but bring the general volume up of the drum. And then I, I always like to have my drum bus at minus eight because then I can kind of do the maths and I know that like, okay, bass can be at minus 10, vocals can be around minus eight as well. Pads and synths can be like minus 10. I just, and then I know when all that adds up, I'm going to be going into the master output at like minus six, minus four or minus six, which is pretty good headroom going into your compressor and whatever stuff you've got on your master output. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's limiting very hard. Yeah, we're taking off like literally just when the kick and the clap hit together. I don't like to limit the drums hard at all. Like the thing that's bringing that gain right down is not limiting. Like putting everything through a limiter can just destroy it. Like limiters make distortion. They can be nice distortion, but I personally prefer the distortion you get from a compressor, like a nice old one like that. And from, I've got two types of saturation on here, you know, tape, and tube that's the kind of that's for me where you really gain back a lot of volume and take the peaks down because saturation is literally cutting off the heads of your of your transients and making them square and whatever shape it chooses to make that square is is the character of your distortion that's the best way i can describe it with words um so you know you're not really hearing these but your subconscious is kind of hearing them if i crank it right up then you're really going to see what it's doing you know, stupid, stupidly crazy. Now we sound like we're in a techno, techno rave, which is great, but that's not what I wanted with this tune. I want it just trimming off those transients, keeping it clean. So my limiter doesn't have to do too much hard work. Um, like, you know, the sound, the, the, the sound characteristics between having all the plugins bypassed and having them on, should be, like for me, pretty minimal. I just want to hear a bit of a soft squelch in those hi-hats with the kick drum. And other than that, I want my levels to be like where they were. If you're compressing the hell out of it, your hi-hats and shakers and tambourines are just going to be way louder and your claps and bass drums are going to be really quiet because you're just, <laughs> you're just like taking so much transient out that you're going to get a load of reverb and shakers back. I don't want that, you know. This like this compressor is doing very little. It's, I think it's doing like maybe minus four dB, and I've got it on about look. The wet and dry is on like thirty percent. It's barely doing anything, but it all adds up. Um, 
So yeah, someone keeps saying you're going to have to rewatch Layer because it's buffering. I'm sorry that's uh, happening, sir. It's not my side, I'm afraid. That is your connection. Um, everything, my end is good. So you should be seeing it in glorious HD. You just hear that clap, like you hear the kick drum and the clap, like the kick is distorting the reverb and the hi-hats on the clack in just a really nice way. You know, it sounds like we're going through a desk, we're hitting the red a bit, like it's getting a bit raw. And that is what I wanted from this tune. Like this tune is raw. <laughs> it's, it's fucking, it's drums, it's some bass and it's some beeps. That's the music. Like there's barely any chords. It's beeps, bass and drums. So when you've got so little going on, Although it's complex rhythms and stuff, like sonically, there's a lot of room in this song um, before the vocals come in anyway. Like, you know, the the intro to the song is is some beeps and a kick. Um, and it literally just bass comes in. Whee! So, yeah, everything's got to be fat and big and... I just, this is more distortion than I would usually use on drums, like for a normal song, like for a pop song or whatever, with a nice soft vocal up front. There's no way I would smash it this hard, but for, for me, this tune needed it. Yeah, giving it the, the welly it deserves. All right, moving on. I don't remember the result of the thing. Was it vocals? I think it was vocals. Uh, guy, for a two-layer kick, how do you deal with phasing? Uh, I really don't deal with phasing. I just leave it and hope it's not. I hope it's in phase. It's, it usually is because I'm not. It's not like I'm miking up a drum kick, like a, a bass drum with two mics. Like one is doing ooh ooh, and the other one is an acoustic sort of top end of a kick. So they're not even the same sample. And I roll off all the lows of the acoustic kick, and then keep just the lows of the low kick. So they're not really occupying the same space. So um, there might be phasing issues, but like, bleh, I don't know. I just listen and check. If I was recording a drum kit, for sure, that's like one of the first things you should do. But it's not really an issue if you're just putting a 909 <laughs> with a bass drum skin slap sound. Yeah, it, you don't get phasing issues from that because you, you haven't got like two or three more mics recording the same sound. That's kind of how I look at it. Um, yeah. What do phasing issues sound like? Everyone talks about them, but I have no idea. Ooh, I wonder if I can demo that. Probably. Shall I demo phasing? <laughs> it's a bit of a sidetrack, but I think we can. Um, all right, if I take... Yeah, let me bounce this to audio. And then duplicate it. And then, what? That's, so that's going to be double the volume. So do I? If I invert the phase of this one, that's yeah, that should work. Uh, what would it be? Utility imaging. No, that's not phase. Where's phase? Utility. Oh, it's in gain. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, you can tell I never do it. <laughs> yeah. Phase invert. There you go. So, take that off. Here is this kick drum. Here is this kick drum. Here is both kick drums. It's going to be double the volume. Now, if I invert the phase, this one, you're going to hear nothing. And that is because they are cancelling each other out. So if you imagine an S shape, like a perfect sine wave going, and you imagine another one going, at the same time, you're just going to get double the volume. But if you flip this S upside down, 
they are going to cancel each other out because the peak of this wave and the trough of this wave are playing at the same time and subtracting volume rather than increasing it. I think that's a good way of putting it. So if I, uh, you know, you, you, you'll see it happen. So there, I've just inverted the phase of the left, not the right. If you have two exact same sounds and you invert the phase, it becomes a perfect mirror and cancels each other out. Yeah, there you go, quantum echo. One plus minus one equals zero. That's a good way of looking at it. But if I slowly start to move this kick just out of sync with the other one, you will start to hear it again because the waveforms, you see these waveforms here? See, look at that. They are perfectly aligned. So when I... I can actually do it with the waveform. If I click on this, functions, uh, invert. Did you see that? Oh, did it do it? I don't, I don't know if it did it. Oh, it's probably inverting them both because they're the same file. Did it do it? Oh yeah, it's doing them to both of them because they're a copy of each other. But um, yeah, let, let me put the phase thing back on. So now we're totally out of phase. If I just slightly drag that out, right? See, look at the waves now. They are not quite in phase. That's where that one meets the center. And this is where that one meets. So you're going to hear a tiny bit of volume. Quiet kick. We're like pretty out of phase, but we're not totally out of phase. So... See, should be even less. Well, pretty much nothing. A little bit more. And then almost nothing. So that's it. Your uh, your maths lesson is complete. I hope that was... Uh, <laughs> there's probably way better videos about that on YouTube. Uh, we won't include that in the edit. Okay, um, that is drums done. Moving on to the vocals. This is where the CPU is going to get really tricky. So I guess the best thing to do is play them first from the drop, if I can, with no music. Maybe take off some crazy effects as well. Yeah, they're going to get really loud because one of the plugins is boosting the gain. Oh, that might. It's never enough. There never will be too much. It's never enough. There never will be too much. You never. Be yeah, this tremolo plugin is going to keep coming in. Maybe if I do. It's never enough. There never will be too much. You never enough. It's never enough, I always leave wanting more Never enough, it's never enough Oh damn it, we missed the harm Ah, <laughs> CPU, crazy on these vocals I always leave wanting more Never Ooh, baby I always leave wanting more yeah, yeah, big harm. Big harmony from Howard and the Gospel Choir there. Um, all right, so starting from the top. We've got the lead vocal here. Uh, I think all of these are Howard, so... It's never oh, man, I hope we can go through these. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Yeah, so you can hear it's really robot. Um, we were like, oh, what's up, Knowledge? This man's still on a damn laptop. <laughs> yeah, you know it. Um, I travel around too much, man. It's never enough. There never will be too much. You never enough. It's never enough. So that's the first harmony, um, on Howard's vocal. I can't remember. I think he recorded it here, not through this mic, probably through the Neumann over there, but I wasn't even there. So uh, this is how it sounded 
Raw. It's never enough that ever will be too much. You never enough. It's never. God damn it. It's never enough. I always leave wanting more. There is a soothe on there. If I if I take it off though, it's gonna start being out of time. So we'll persist. So yeah, first up, um, compression going through this waves waves <laughs> waves eleven seventy six. It's never enough that ever will be too much. You. Then we're going through fucking logic pitch correction, which Howard chose. So what we got? All the black notes and F selected. What's that F major? F sharp major. It's never enough that ever will be. So I think he really wanted that. Da -da 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 -da, that little skip to make it sound extra robot. It's never enough that ever will be too much you. And it just sounds weird there. And I'm automating the release time, uh, attack time, so that it lets some vibrato through. Because before, I had to do it on all of them. Um, see, all, all these purple lines here are all me increasing the attack so that he can go, because otherwise it would go, and it just sounded terrible. So, yeah, that was annoying. It's never enough that I... Because I like that. Da -da -da -da. It's a really cool like sound. But yeah. Um, someone, someone said auto-tune or Melodyne. Literally always I would usually Melodyne, but for this effect, 100% auto-tune because I want it to sound... Da -da 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 -da. And it was because Howard literally recorded this vocal through that tremolo effect. So this thing here, like the thing that you hear on the tune is all the whole vocal is going through tremolo um it's never enough that never will be too much you pretty mad you know we don't usually do effects as bold as that but he was really going for this like todd edwards you know choppy sample kind of vibe and singing through tremolo um when it's that da, 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 just sort of cleaned it right up and made it sound like an old sample that had been chopped up. So shouts to Howard on thinking of singing, recording through tremolo live. Um, I ended up automating it and changing it a bit and making it clean, but he sent it to me with tremolo on the master out. And I was like, what the hell? This sounds like Todd Edwards. How did you do that? <laughs> it's never enough. There never will be too much you. You can hear on the much, it sort of disappears and then stays, you know, you can see here this bypass at the top, these ones here. That's all this plugin being bypassed. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. And we have another tremolo doing the do 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 do. So it's like the battle of the tremolos. You got the logic one, you got sound toys one. This one's doing eighth notes. Do, 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 do. Du, 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 du. And this one's doing swung sixteenths. The reason I use the sound toys one is because it has swing. So instead of going, du, 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 it's going, du, 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 du. and this is a great tremolo for that. So you'll see uh, this coming in and out. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Yeah, for some reason I turned it down. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Pretty mad. Um, very bold effect, but for a club track, I just felt like it needed messing up in some crazy way. So um, that's the main sound you're getting with it. I'll come back to this bus here with all of that. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Let's go through the individual sounds. So you've heard the lead. Um, yeah, they've all got the same plugins going on. Bit of overdrive, bit of EQ. Take, yeah, taking out some like crazy resonance. Um, gem dopamine which is like boosting the highs. Need to update that. Um, there's a lot of Ozone 9 imager going on too. So I'm just trying to widen out some of this. I don't, I don't know if that even, is even doing anything, to be honest. It must be. It's, it is a mono track, but... It's never enough. There never will be too much. It's never enough. Oh, yeah, it widens it right out. I think what's happening, right, is because it's a mono... Um, signal but pitch the pitch correction plugin is in stereo and it does kind of add some like weird stuff in the sides um which i liked and i was like i want to push the sides a lot um so that each vocal sounds like it's kind of in a weird bathroom box thing it's never enough that ever will be too much you straight down the middle 
It's and then you listen to that S, it's really It's never enough, there never will be too much. Yeah, so don't usually put a widener on a mono vocal, but felt right. Um, and yeah, we got one pan left, one pan right. It's never enough, there never will be too much. You Such a weird sound with that pitch correction. Like he was trying to sing like a robot. Uh, first harmony. It's never enough, there never will be too much. You High one. It's never enough, there never will be too much. You Really pitch correcty and weird. Like stuff it's we never we never usually do that, <laughs> you know? It's never enough, there never but it just totally felt right for this tune. That kind of getting that vocodery talk box almost sound. It's never enough. There never will be too much. You really happy harmony. This one. Do 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 do. Never. Uh, someone. Another person said Melodyne over auto tune. Yes, but you cannot get that sound with Melodyne. So no, there is no better. Or worse, it's just what do you need? Do you need to tune your vocal and it sound natural as possible? Or do you need it to sound like a fucking robot singing in a toilet? Then probably use auto tune. <laughs> it's never enough, there never will be too much you. Like, I know that sounds weird. That does not sound natural, and that's good. That's what we wanted. Um, always leave wanting more. Never. I just love that cheeky such a weird heart. Never enough. And you got some extra harmonies down here, but they're muted this time around. Um I'll just play them anyway. Oh, you have to unfreeze it. Alright, we'll go with these ones. Leave one to more. Very sick. Yeah, you're getting So auto-tuned. You can really hear there's no ma. It's just ma immediate. But that's what Howard wanted. Sound like Todd Edwards. Uh, the bass note of the vocal is my favorite thing ever. I think it's a low D. It's, it's basically like the lowest note Howard can sing. Um, oh, I'm so happy this is going on the stream. Ma. <laughs> Yes. Let's give him let's give this man some treble. Ma 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 That's pretty damn low. Um I've got a lower voice than Howard, so I can hit that not too hard, but he was I think he really pushed for that one. It just adds so much weight when all the vocal kicks in, you know? Just gives it such like a warm It's never enough. Leave more. Yeah, you, you get it. Um, so that's the harmony. It's like a four-part harmony, I guess. You got the lead, that harmony there, that one, and occasionally, uh, occasionally a five-part. So definitely not his most insane. But um, yeah, the cool part is that underneath it, backing it all up, is the gospel choir, um, which sounds like this. Never enough. It's never enough. I always leave wanting more. And they're not auto-tuned, so they're adding this very natural and bright kind of sound underneath the perfectly chopped um, robot version of Howard. Um, and they do each each harmony as well. Never enough. It's never enough. I always leave wanting Just so cool, man. So good to have that sound on there. Here they are all together. If my Mac can get through this ordeal. They nail that more, that, that bit at the end. So good. Um, so that's uh, Howard and a Gospel Choir all together. Um, it's just the same thing the whole way through. No real other, other lyrics. It's never enough. There's never enough. There never will be too much you. Never enough. I always leave wanting more. I do feel like Howard's best work is usually when he keeps it really simple and it's like more of a chant, you know, like F for you. That kind of, here's the damn hook. <laughs> Sing it. Uh, 
yeah so all those vocals um are going into the vocal bus which you can see here first thing they're going through is compressor blue stripe 1176 wanting more, never enough. um then a bit of eq just rolling off low mids, boosting some high. You can hear the like ah, on those moors coming through, which is really nice. Then we're going into soothe. That is what's destroying my Mac, I'm pretty sure about it. So that's just pulling out resonances. If you don't know what soothe does, I can't explain it right now, but it's the best plugin ever made. Then we're going through this uh, inflator which here you go so it's adding you know quite a lot of volume but it's also sort of doing a lot of widening and boosting the highs a bit this is this slider here sort of chooses which frequencies it pushes around so i've got it slightly on the bright side of things really hear the air coming out on the vocals so I'm pushing that air up even more uh, then we've got a ring shifter again but that, that's not on the whole time I don't think yeah that's right I'm using that as with automation so I'm bringing that in on the on the moors like on the long yeah it happens pretty much every time like if I push that all the way it just makes like almost a flanger you know it's it is doing phase shifting basically so yeah you just get those nice like i really love it when um when tame impala do that like when when kevin parker like puts the whole mix through a flanger just for a second you know and then pulls it out so i'm not doing it on the whole mix but all the vocals are going through like a flanger for a bit there's also a tune that i've played the other day that does it um Oh, uh, Danny California by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. There's like that fill, the drum fill. It goes dig 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 before the guitar solo. Do 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 do. They just put the whole song for a massive flanger, and it just goes just for a second. So I don't know if like Kevin was inspired by that, but I was I was blasting that tune in the day the other the other day in LA, um, and I was like, yeah, that is. I didn't realize that's where I got the influence for putting loads of stuff through flanges every now and again but that tune is a big one definitely i love how they did that it's such a tasty flanger they used as well led zeppelin used to do it a lot too yeah that's probably where where tame impala got most of the influence to do it but yeah don't be afraid to use your effects more violently on entire buses or even the whole mix like i always have a couple of effects plugins on my master out just to mess with it like a dj set you know you can just hit record and see what happens and you get some happy accidents going sometimes valhalla uber mod is a good one too yeah i don't use that one too much but yeah violent flanger noted <laughs> yeah some 41 fat lip great use of flanger okay cool i don't even remember that one it's been a long time but i'm sure you're right um, then we get back to the tremolo stuff, which I already showed you guys, but that's doing all of the choppy stuff. Never enough. Never enough. It's never enough. Then we got a bit more EQ, just taking out low mids. Oh, and this is the filter one, so this is just doing sweeps, basically. Stop it. Yeah, um, H delay and reverb, and then I'm making up some gain plug in at the end um i think for some reason the um the sound toys tremolator adds a lot of distortion which is cool it's like a an, an actual tremolo unit you know if you put put too much signal into a real tremolo it's going to distort so it has these meters here and, and i found that i needed to back it off a lot to keep it out of the red here or it was just adding distortion to the vocals in a not nice way so keeping it very much in the green so yeah that it's interesting some plugins they have no real top. There is no distortion. But I don't think there's a point where with the logic tremolo, like you can't distort into that. It just does tremolo. But this one has some characteristics of like a distortion unit. So always check that you're actually getting the sound that you want. Um, you can change that and tweak that settings on sound toys. Tweak menu allows you to go from dirt to clean. Yeah, I know that's the case. 
in uh yeah see I've, but i had it on clean and it was still doing it so but they're not like it doesn't turn it off it just gives you different distortions like one is a clean amp one is a fat amp like they're all still kind of on though um it's cool i, I like it on, on some tunes i wish there was like another extra setting that was just f fully off for moments like that but it, it didn't matter too much was there a reason to use the CLA over the CL1B? Yeah, um, the CL1B is super clean, like the cleanest fucking compressor ever. Like it has tube distortion, but it's so subtle and it's so, so, so clean. Um, the Blue Stripe 1176 is not clean. It adds harmonics, saturation, lovely stuff. And because I know Howard for a fact would have recorded these vocals straight from a Neumann into the Apollo with no neve no compressor on the way in i needed to give it as much like flavor as possible so that's why i'm using the 76 um i probably should have put each one through a neve at some point but they've also every single one has also got an 1176 so each one is going through two compressors and that does add a fair amount um yeah that should should answer your question that's the vocals um, no sends on there, not sending to like logic chorus or like any outboard reverbs or anything. It's all in this one tasty bus and all being automated here. So yeah, you got reverb build ups, H delay, feedback. There is some cool uh, feedback stuff going on actually, which I would I'd like to show you guys. Well, I, I think mostly actually that's the beeps that are doing the coolest. <laughs> yeah, and plus, who knows, maybe I'm not allowed. Yeah, so just bringing up the reverb with the filter. Just like DJ style again, basically. Um, but yeah, a lot of work here. Again, like none of it's the same. It's all it's basically all jammed out and just I felt it out as we went through. Any final questions on the vocals? Example of a YouTube video on mid-side recording. The sensation of an unprocessed mid-side recording is like an absolutely extreme example of panning phase. Cool. The sound guy, Jay. I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. I can, I can know what you mean, yeah. Uh, thanks, Tom Whitfield. Welcome. Uh, thanks to everyone who subscribed tonight. Good to have you. Tips for put the right volume on the vocals in the track. Oh, like the level against the music? Well, I mean, <laughs> just you got to just use your ears, man. Um, I have some volume automation, I think, going on. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking less than a decibel of difference, except for these build-ups. These go down. Like that, yeah, that sort of fades down. Yeah, so as when the cutoff goes down, I turn up the volume because when it's just you need like more volume to get that across. And when you open up the filter, I'm sort of backing off the volume a bit. But yeah, we're talking like three decibels here and there. Um, like Yeah, but I mean, I'm just pretty much using my ears. That's the only way. Like, can you hear the vocal over the music? No? Turn it up. Is it too loud? Turn it down. That's basically it. And there'll be moments in the tunes where you'll need to, you know, there'll be a big moment in the guitar or a big moment in the synth and you'll need to sort of either pull that down and push the vocal up or, or you know, all the reverse. It's all got to just come from your ears though and it's just practice. Ride the fader. Exactly. Sophie says ride the faders. That is the vibe. Although you don't have to do it manually anymore you can obviously draw it in like i've done um but yeah there's there's a reason why i send all my vocals down a vocal bus it's so that i can grab that fader and move it around whenever i want if i feel like that the vocal's not cutting through i will you know put it on record and just just move it around would you ever process all vocals individually instead of on a bus you, well you do both you know that's that's the thing. Your bus comes after the individual processing. So see, each vocal here is on its own track. And each one of these has its own plugins. See? 
there's a track, there's a track, there's a track, there's a track, there's a track. And they all have slightly different pans, slightly different EQs, slightly different wideners. Same compressor on each one, different pitch correction settings for different notes. Um, and then all of that goes through that. So you do both. Um, you don't have to do any of anything, <laughs> but usually you would individually process each vocal. Uh, and if you wanted to, you would print that as well. You don't have to leave all these ridiculous plugins on or you end up like me with CPU nightmares. But I like to be able to go back and change anything at any point. Um, yeah, and that all goes through there. Through there. Turning speakers down while mixing helps with vocals a lot, definitely. And having different types of speakers too, that's really helpful for getting the level of music, uh, the level of the vocal right over the music. Uh, I recommend like laptop speakers iphone speakers um headphones car like where where you know the sound really well low volume like quiet room can you hear the vocal if you if you're leaning in or you're turning up the mix a lot your vocal's probably too quiet a lot of old hip-hop records used to have the rapper surprisingly quiet and it was because they were either mixing way too loud or they just wanted you to turn it up it is kind of a cool trick. Like if you have the vocal low in the mix, it does force the listener to turn it up, which is kind of cool. <laughs> but like if you want to have your tune, you know, reach a wide audience, uh, such a, ge a generalization. I don't know if you if you want to if you want a lot of people to know the hook of your tune, they've got to be able to hear it even in a restaurant, even in the car, wherever you are. You got to like you got to have the vocal loud, man. And most of my favorite house music, like sing along tunes, the vocals right there, like right up front. Lola's theme is a good example. Gabriel, Roy Davis Jr. and Pevan Everett, great example. Gypsy Woman, the vocal's like bang, right there in your face. And if it's a good vocal, you should have it right there. NS10's great, great for uh, checking, checking vocals. I just bought myself NS10's with blown tweeters. Ah, but you use them just for the mids and tune the vocals just right. I had a, uh, a period where I was... Um, I had NS10s under my table and I used to love that because it would do the same thing as you're talking about. Just take out all the highs. All you'd hear is this weird low like mids thing. And yeah, for checking the guitars, synths, vocals, percussion, it was actually sick. Like I moved them up and it was like, oh yeah, it's way clearer. It's much cooler now. Um, but they, it's quite cool having them just in a different bit of the room sometimes. <laughs> just makes you listen in. Your phone speakers are mono. That is actually not true uh, on the iPhone. If you turn it sideways, it is uh, a stereo mix now. But there's nothing wrong with checking on a mono thing too. You probably, you probably should. I don't mix in mono. I know people who do. I know people who check their mixes in mono. I just do not ever do that. <laughs> yeah, mix cubes. I have Oratone mix cubes too. They're my go-tos now instead of NS10s. I actually prefer them. Really quiet, low level. They're great. Even if your iPhone is vertical, they still put out stereo signal. Yeah, that's true. But you'll perceive it as mono, I guess, because it's hitting you at the same rate. But yeah, turn your iPhone. <clears throat> Alrighty, that's the vocals and the drums. Up next, the beeps. Here's some beeps for you guys. Take all these plugins off. Actually, no, you can hear it first with plugins. Got some cool automation on here. God damn it. Oh, wow, there's loads of automation I need to add. Hey. Oh. My laptop is having a nightmare. I can't believe it. I haven't dropped a single frame somehow. Yeah, okay, that should be enough. All right, here's some beeps. So again, my aim with this was to make it sound as 
like analog as possible. Well, which the beeps are, they're from a real synth. But I wanted the distortion, the H delay, like everything to sound like it's moving and it's like a jam and see if people would even notice that I'd done it with a mouse. Um, very, I used to do that all the time with the first album, especially. I was like tricking people, trying to make them think that we were had a massive analog studio, but we were just doing it all with a mouse. <laughs> to me, this sounds analog as hell. And yeah, each time is different. Each each thing is different. Tons of ping pong delay. Um, and then we get to like... This is where the distortion starts to go really crazy. And you get to beeps insane. So yeah, what, what I actually did, I'll mute Beeps Insane for a sec. Um, what I did for this crazy section of Beeps, um, it wasn't really like behaving the way I wanted it to when I was doing the distortion because um, it was just so intense. Um, let me get rid of this mute for a sec. I'll see if it does it tonight because it was an interesting bug that I found with sound toys almost. Uh, f first of all, here's the beeps with no plugins. So this is what me and Andy jammed out. Maybe. It's all Juno. So compress. Yeah, nothing. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Bit of EQ, boosting the high mids. Overdrive. Blah, blah, blah. Nothing interesting. The, the interesting stuff's here. So the it's going through a decapitator on punish mode. And that's what's giving it that bzz, 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 over the top. But I'm using it in a tiny... No, it's not even on one. But it just immediately makes it sound analog. Which it, it is, but more analog. <laughs> On top of that, Decimort doing some bit crush. Just adding more analog vibes. Oh, that's doing filter. And then, yeah, some effects. Um, is there another decapitator? Holy shit. Yeah, that's the crazy one. So all this distortion is all done with um, decapitators on like full crazy. So what I did was I sent this signal to a bus and hit record. And that's how I came up with, oh, excuse me. Oh, big sneeze. Um, yeah, I did this like insane beep. This insane beeps file is basically a bounce of that like what you're about to hear now the reason i did it is i couldn't get decapitator to do the same thing every time i think like when you're like when you're working decapitator really hard it sort of behaves in like a really weird way and every time i played back the tune it was different i can't really explain it but I, it might do it now if my laptop lets me play it no Yeah, so the way I got it to do that, which was me just totally experimenting with uh, Decapitator, was I switched the style of the distortion on the drop, and it makes the whole thing go completely mad. Like, if you see... Well, yes, and then it also totally... Is that the right Decapitator? Might be this one. Yeah, that switch I did by mistake, like on the drop. I was trying out ones with it on full. And I was like, wow, the, the switch of it is making it 
it sort of fades into the next setting. Right? I thought it would just go like, but it goes like, and I had the the feedback on like just over a hundred percent. So it's like self oscillating feedback, um, and just switched the entire type of distortion on punish mode. So basically, working it as hard as I possibly can. See that? I'll try it on Neve mode. See, they're all totally different. E is definitely the most aggressive. I don't know what E stands for. Um, but yeah, if you do it on the drop, you can kind of make these mental moments happen. So I did it a few times, got all this automation in there, did it as best I could. Um, but yeah, it was still just sort of slightly different every time. So I just ended up just manually like making a, you know, another file. Maybe I should just go back actually. Yeah, and uh, all that happens is this, like, mutes. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the mute. There you go. Yeah, that one mutes and beeps insane comes in. It's not even perfect. I think I, I actually messed up the filter quite a lot, but underneath the vocals, you don't. Yeah, it's like two totally different sounds, but in the mix, it was totally fine. And then this just builds and builds and builds and, you know, you get to that peak crazy. Crazy. Destruction. Full destruction for the craziest drop. I know, there's no chance I'm going to play that. Maybe if I mute the vocals, it might do it. No fucking chance. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, just giving it maximum attack. Never enough distortion. There you go, man. I'm telling you, I wasn't... That's not a trivial thing. I was genuinely thinking that. I remember sending this first version over to Howard and my managers and being like, is that last drop, like, too mad? And we were all like, no, it's never enough. <laughs> it's never too mad. I was like, yeah, great. That is the actual point. So again, that intensity of this drop is like, it's never enough. <laughs> like more, moreness. More is more for this tune, without a doubt. Um, okay, moving down, away from the beeps. Oh my God, it's got a mind of its own. Um, these are just the same file, just pushed up an octave, I'm pretty sure. They just come in and back it up now and again. Glitchy one, blah, blah, blah. And that's, it's sort of slightly behind that as well, just to sort of give it like a flammy feel. Loads of echo and delay and stuff. Got some, some build-ups happening here as well, like reverbs and... Like playing with the, uh... oh, for God's sake. Yeah, you know what it's going to do. You know, that's the beeps. Um, there's a drone noise going on throughout, which is Monarch. And that's just doing like some frequency oscillating, like bouncy stuff. Watch this oscillator here. This is what's doing everything. Yeah, you get the vibe. Just going sharp and flat, sharp and flat of uh, of the note. So like this oscillator is doing like the whole time, and this one below it's going. 
tune and they're sort of bouncing off each other and creating those nice thingies. What else? Oh yeah, the guitar. <laughs> Prince guitar. So this, uh, I think this was Connor. Might have been Seth. I don't remember now. <laughs> We're getting nowhere with this now. It just didn't fit the vibe. Cool, but you know. It, it, once that massive bass went in, it just didn't fit. It was like, this is a hard garage tune. <laughs> like, we didn't need the... Yeah, I don't know. It was a cool little starter. Got us in the key, um, but then we, we decided against it. So, you can hide that. Um, and yeah, this was, this was definitely Connor. These chords here were... Uh, Definitely him. Woo! I like that one at the end. That is nice. Yeah, they, I mean, it all worked with the bass line and everything, um, but once the vocals kind of started going in, me and Howard decided against them. You know, um, again, just didn't think it fit the vibe, but it did set us off in the right direction with the vocals and everything, so shouts to Connor Albert on that one. Um, stab chords. What's that? Are those the little? Du -du 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 -du? I think so. Yeah, just like sawtooth wave. You know, classic. Yeah, got some more flangey stuff going on there with uh, RC20. I'm using the wobble effect here, but I'm using the mix knob to blend it with the non-phased sound. So you're getting like kind of a weird thing going on. You hear that every now and again? If you're in headphones, you'll definitely hear that. It's going subtle, but I really, I love that setting on RC20. Really cool. Stab chords off tempo. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just messing with the rate. I couldn't make the uh, the the tremolator do it. Yeah, that's right. I've got so so these ones. I've got like the tremolo setting on like fixed to the grid. You know, like sixteenth notes because I needed it to be really tight. Like da 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 da. -da. So just for these two, I wanted it to go like da 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 da. So I just made another track. Again, just to make each bit a bit different, a bit nice. You barely even notice, to be honest, it's underneath so much other stuff. But I know it's there. Um, What else we got? Oh yeah, this bit's really cool. So, shouts to you if you've even noticed this in the tune. Um, But yeah, this is a this is a bit of the choir sample, bit of the gospel choir, put into a plugin called Quanta, which is a granular, a granulator, basically. It sounds like this. I'll, I'll mute it. So you can hear bits of it coming through, like, never enough. Oh. 
yeah, so I basically did what I'm doing right there, drag this bit around, mess with some parameters, you know, just screw around with it for a while. Um, and I sent it to a bus and hit record. So I basically was recording myself mess around with it and um, ended up with this take. Oh, come back. Really subtle. And that's just sort of underneath there, just building more. Ooh, vocals have gone all weird. Must have plugins off. They're doing like the downbeat. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to. Oh, it's because I got that turned off. Let's just mute them. Makes no fucking difference. It's pretty subtle, man. I think the the time where you can hear them the most is this last drop. Go. <sighs> you may never hear them. There they were, just for a little bit. Of that. That's literally like the probably only time that you can consciously perceive them, but they are in there for this kind of. They just add like a. They fill a space where, like, without. It's one of those elements of a song where when you take it away, you miss it, but when it's in, you don't even notice it. So, it's, yeah, it's hard to explain if you're just sort of getting started, but yeah. <laughs> For me, that's my favorite bit of the tune these days. Like playing that warehouse project the other day, like we like cut all the lights out just for that one second and then lasers like for the outro. No, oh! yeah, man, that's for me. That that's like that's the little moments that what garage is all about. You know, and you bring it back in just for a second here. Like so minor, <laughs> like it's a tiny, tiny thing. Oh, yeah. Just tiny little details like that. You know? Which you'll never hear. Yeah, there's like a little hi-hat fill there, I think, that sort of backs it up. I think that's like the only time you hear that little hi-hat moment. Yeah, that. That's the only time that, that that sound is in the entire song. That little thing. Just complements those granular vocals nicely. Gives them some high end. Alright, any questions on the beeps and synths? I think that's uh, basically it. What did I miss? Impressive track colouring, thanks. I take a lot of pride in that. As you know, if you've been following the streams for a while. The mere mention of granular summoned a cellar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Quant is regarded as a great granulator or not. I, I know Ableton does a stock one. Logic doesn't do a stock one. I think there there is there's one on a synth or a couple of synths, but there's not like a go-to drag and drop audio file that just does granulation. Granulation? So I um I use Quanta. It's it's pretty, it's a nice interface. I like it. You need a new MacBook. Yeah, I know. Granulator 2 is great. Oh, is that a thing? Oh, is that? That's Ableton, probably. Quanta is pretty much the best, easiest to use, but there are better ones, but they're hard to use. Right, yeah, I don't want hard. I want very easy and quick. Damn, so jealous some of you guys got to see this live. Oh, yeah. Come to the show, man. Doing lots of shows next year. No questions about this pads, guys. Alchemy has granular, yeah, it does. That's right. No questions. All right, cool. Bass, last thing. Substantial bass. This was the Juno, definitely. Juno 106. 
Andy, aka Luxury, on the keys. Sounding pretty good out of the gate, but we can get it better. We got Overdrive. Uh, no chorus on the Juno for this one. Left it blank. The, actually, the chorus on my Juno is broken. That's why there's none. But it's bass too, so I, I wanted it just down the middle. Um, didn't need any like widening. I've got a bit of Logic chorus and Roto cabinet on the very on the on the output here, so it, it's going a bit wide. Um, but yeah, I just didn't need it wide. Just needed it <laughs> huge. <laughs> no chorus on the 106. Yeah, there is. I, I, oh, you mean I didn't use any? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, rolling off like the super lows, like 30 hertz and down or something. A little boost on the 50, taking out some low mids and boosting like this kind of. I don't know what you call this. Like, it's just like. It's the like. At the transient, like the click at the start of each note, I just really like that on a Juno. That's one of the things you you cannot get from the Tal one. Like it just doesn't do a good pop on the start of the note. Uh, I've found that with soft synths generally, to be honest. Like Moogs and Junos, they just have a better entry point when you press the note. I, I don't know why. You see, like they look like each time. That's just, you don't get that on the towel. You get a horrible digital click that's just like, it doesn't have like that. I know it's a very small difference, but makes a difference to me. Distortion. So running it full, but just on a tiny amount. Like if I crank it up, you'll. <laughs> Fucking can't hear anything. Oh. Jesus, that's really great. So yeah, I've got that on just a tiny amount. Just to give it a bit of... Then we're going through... Oh, this is really cool. Yeah, we're going through RC20 and I've got like the um, flux mode on the bit crusher, which is just making this weird resonancy sound. Like, so here it goes. I'll turn it up a bit so you can... It's more obvious. God damn it. Let me turn this off. Yeah, you can hear it going. A normal bit crusher would just do the same note each day. It would just go. Whereas this is going. Like getting really crazy. It's like, a, it's like applying a different bit crusher to every note. You know, it's like you'd have 10 bit crushers all on a different setting. But with the RC20, you can put it in this flux mode, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I, I like the, I use the RC20 in a very different way to most producers I've seen. Most producers use it to make like a lo-fi piano or like crush a sample and make it all wobbly and like lo-fi. I rarely use it to make things lo-fi. I usually use it as like sprinkles on on something um, or a fa or a flanger. Like I use it much more as like an effects box rather than a s like a a sample crusher thing. Each to their own. Uh, then you got some delay. I don't need to show you guys that and some reverb. And the whole thing is getting side chained, <clears throat> multi band compressed side chain on the lows. Um, so I'm like just ducking the sub with the kick drum and leaving all the highs um, because. You don't, you don't need to duck the highs. I quite like the harmonics coming through, you know. Oh, better turn on the... Oh, I think you have to have that turned on. Yeah, see it working. So it's quite nice because it means that these high notes don't get side-chained because they don't need to. You know, they're not... They haven't got loads of energy and sub. They're not clashing with the kick. It's only sort of 100 hertz down that you need to duck. So I'm leaving all of these nice notes in.
yeah so just not side chaining the whole signal <clears throat> just side chaining the sub um and yeah a bit of chorus and roto cab on there i think that's it that's every part anyway we got the mix bus so what's going on with the mix bus We've got a gain knob on there that's doing absolutely nothing going into ssl g bus compressor then some tape uh then the drama by soft tube it's like a, another oh, multi-band compressor if you've been watching the stream for a while you will have seen it a million times Saturn adding some saturation, clean tube setting. I love the clean tube for just adding some top end sparkle on the way out. Uh, then the Oxford inflator. Um, and then I, I would have Soothe here as well. I, I put Soothe on my master out just a tiny bit um, with the wet and dry knob. Especially with a tune like this, it's got such a loud rim and loads of vocals, loads of synths. Like the mid range is going to jump out at points. So you just need something to catch those moments. Um, it's on a, it would be on a very low setting and then EQ as well um, I will have um, bypassed this before I, I sent, it, sent it to master this would have been my like guide I was using while sort of listening to it like, I've got that one bypassed as well I would have copied this using my SSL fusion box so I would have gone alright sit like a little DB boost on 50 take out some treble on the top or like the, the, it's got a high um, it's got a high band compressor the fusion so I was basically using this as a visual guide of how I wanted to set my fusion so I would have bypassed that and then as you can see here I sent the whole mix out of output 3 and 4 that sent played the whole mix out of output 3 and 4 through my SSL desk here into the fusion and then hit record as it was playing itself and you end up with that, which I've named SSL Return. So that's the whole tune, playing from start to finish, um, pre-mastered, basically. And then from there, that then goes to the master out, which is here, which has a remix effects on, which I definitely didn't use. And that's where I'd now put my limiter, where I'd bounce the demo through the limiter. Um, I wouldn't bounce it through a limiter before sending it to mastering. That would be dumb. Um, so there you go. That's, uh, that's the whole mix. Bam. So yeah, that was you're hearing the SSL mix there. I'll try and flick between them. They're not perfectly in sync, but you, you should get a Yeah, they're not gonna be gain matched either, is the thing. Let me try and There we go, that's matched the gain. <laughs> now I've just gotta make it play for long enough so you can actually hear it. <laughs> it always does that at the end. Yeah, no, this is completely screwed now. I I don't think it's gonna let me do any more. <laughs> okay, that was the original. There's the fusion. <laughs> okay, it sounds much louder, but you should hear the tambourines are wider. The the reverb is wider because because the um the fusion box got a wicked stereo widener on it. Like it's so so good, better than any software widener I've ever seen um, so oh uh, yeah hear the tambourines like the tambourines in the original are just kind of down there and not too sparkly and then they just got this real nice shine to them but they sound like tucked in at the same time yeah it's just it's a great mastering tool i haven't i've actually been to a mastering studio in a long time and um that doesn't have an ssl fusion they seem to have become a real like staple of a mastering studio so i'm lucky i've got one because i can just sort of like i like put it through how i want it and then i'll send the mastering engineer 
the fusion version and a blank version like a, a normal version of the song that hasn't gone through the box and then like um he'll listen to both and basically choose which one he thinks best and um i'll send him like i'll take a picture on my iphone of my settings on the on the fusion box so that if he wants to do one himself with a slightly tweaked version he knows he's like basing it on my initial settings but maybe he thinks this will be better if i do this or this so yeah like maximum control i love leaving everything open till like you know the final the final moment um just in case you want to change anything who do you use for mastering i use stuart hawks at metropolis in london west london um any questions guys i'm gonna go pretty soon five minutes of questions I hope this was helpful. Never Enough is definitely one of, if not my favorite songs on the EP. It's between that and In My Arms. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of a lot of work post production. Um, the initial writing of the music was like we made three beats that day. It was so quick, beeps and bass. Um, the structuring of it, all that automation, the granular stuff. Oh my god, that took so long. Um, and then Howard's vocal, I think Howard wrote the vocals in an afternoon, sent them over, got those all sorted, gospel choir as well. So I think from the absolute birth of the song, that was like April this year, and it was done by June, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, a nice, fast, not too painful one. <laughs> Should I buy Monarch and make drum and bass guy? Uh I don't know. <laughs> you, maybe you should buy Monarch. I mean, I use it all the time. I like it. Not sure about the drum and bass thing. When did you make the tune? Oh, I just, I just said. Did you turn all? Did you turn on all the modules on the Fusion? Yes, most likely. Um, maybe not the high frequency compressor. It would depend. Like the way you're supposed to use that fusion is you boost the high frequencies on the EQ and then squash with the with the high frequency compressor. So you're boosting and subtracting at the same time. So you're getting all of that like air out. Um if my memory serves me right, I think I turned them both off. I think I didn't use uh the high EQ. I think I gave it some some bass on 50 because it's such a bass heavy tune. I was like, that's gotta just there's never enough bass, <laughs> um, but there was enough treble, so I didn't boost the treble. So yeah, I think I I definitely used the drive. The drive on it is gorgeous, like so so good. Um, yeah, definitely put it through the drive. Definitely used the stereo widener, bit of bass. I think that was it. Dylan Green remix. Um, still working it out with how we're going to put it out, but it's it's in the works coming did you yeah i did use the compressor on the thing as well me from bletchingly again <laughs> shout out bletchingly can i send you a mashup of disclosure and michael jackson yeah sure join the discord do it in the appropriate channel i mean you can post it here if you want right now um, I'm still recovering from getting sick from your Vegas show. <laughs> Sorry about that, but I would do it over. I would do it a thousand times over again. Yes, yeah, it's uh, pretty much unavoidable. I think at the moment, especially in London, like everyone I know has got a cold or COVID. <laughs> Actually, no, no one's got COVID at the moment, but a lot of people have got colds. Um, yeah, who cares? We've got to get back out there in it. You would do it a thousand times over. Me too. When you go in to do those details, when do you know is the right time to dive that deep? Like, do you wait till you're clear on the idea? Yeah, definitely. I, you don't want to like, you don't want to be trying to get the initial vibe out and be like 15 minutes on, you know, a reverb filter automation curve or like a or whatever really yeah that stuff that stuff waits till the very end um with logic you can revert back to earlier versions i think so there i could i could try and jump back to what it looked like after day one let me see if that if this works after reverting the last manually saved version of your project appears oh god no i don't want to do that 
no, I don't want to do that. It's going to ruin the project. But yeah, I, it would have been, you know, way more just less stops, less less drama, you know, just like the basic idea. Um, definitely like that stuff comes towards the last, you know, those are the final hurdles, getting all those nice details in. Are you missing doing live shows with your old setup or enjoying DJ sets with live guests? Um, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it now. Yeah. And it feels still quite live to me. So I've got an MPC up there where I do like a ton of drumming. Like I do almost more drumming on that thing than I do mixing at the moment. Howard mixes for like the first two thirds of the show while I tap away and I got my mono tribe up there and I play a bunch of acapellas and stuff. Like for me, it's still very much like pretty live, especially, um, especially like warehouse projects. Like we, we would just play tunes. Like we didn't really have much of a plan. Um, so yeah, that was cool. <clears throat> Can you mention anything on game music? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Not yet, no. You'll know when I'm allowed to say. How do you decide between dynamic versus static on Pro Q3? Well, they're just two totally different things. It's not really like one or the other. It's like, what do you want to do? Um, like static EQ is going to change the sound for good and it's going to stay there. Dynamic EQ is when you only want it to change the sound when a certain threshold is reached, like a compressor. You can think of dynamic EQ like a compressor just for that bit of the frequency. So a compressor squashes the whole volume of a signal. Dynamic EQ, you know, say you just put it on the top. <laughs> it's only going to compress that and all the bass drums still going to go through however much it likes. So think of dynamic EQ like a compressor for a certain bit of the sound um, and static EQ is EQ for the sound. <laughs> They're two different things. But it's just nice to have them all in one window. You used to have either an EQ or a multiband compressor, which you would choose which one to do. Dynamic EQ is, so is like somewhere in between. Um, and I use it so much. I love it. Pro Q3 is like... Oh, Pro Q3 is probably the best plugin. Like I've said Soove's the best plugin a lot. Soove's the best like life-saving plugin, but like I could make an album without it. I could not make an album without Pro Q3. I rely on it hard. <laughs> that would be an essential plugin. Was the Disclosure Doge NFT holder happy with the tune? Mate, he loved it. He watched the stream back after and he, he had the best time. He said he was, thought it was sick. Um, I'm going to finish it this week and put it up on Zora at some point this week. I haven't had a chance to finish yet, but it was it was pretty much done, I thought, by the end of the stream. But yeah, he loved it. <laughs> he was well happy. Tips on getting claps and snares to cut through synths in the same frequency range. Um, you could sidechain the synths with the clap on a super fast setting. So when the clap hits, the synths like get out of the way. Um, not necessarily on the whole sound. Like that's another cool thing with a multi-band compressor you can do is you could you can side chain like what I was doing with my bass there. You know, I side chain just the sub with the kick drum. You could side chain the mids of the synths with a clap. So the and the lows of the synth will stay there and the middle will get out of the way. Uh, I do that with vocals and pads sometimes uh yeah someone said track spacer that's a kind of cool plugin that does it for you but the old school way would be um like say your guitars and synths are getting in the way of the lead vocal you could send the vocal signal to a sidechain compressor on the synths and guitar and it would just sort of lower when the vocal sings the this comes down and when it doesn't sing they come up and they're in this kind of like balancing act um that's uh that's the old school way of doing it. And then plugins like Trackspacer and uh, Duck. Is there one called Duck? Yeah. They like carve out some room for you. Where is the difference to a multiband compressor then? What? Yeah, I think I said between dynamic EQ and multiband compressor, there isn't much. There, there really isn't. It's just nice that it's all in one window. You can do a static EQ here and some dynamic here and some static here. You can just do it all in one nice window.
<laughs> Someone said they left a £10 note in the Finsbury Park disclosure wall. Sick. Go get it. <laughs> Some Indonesians say Suv is black magic plugin. <laughs> you say that, Jay Mono. Yeah, it is. It's cheating almost. How frequent are the remix competitions now? Very infrequent whenever I can do one, basically. Uh, I'll try and do one this week. I won't be able to judge it because I'm I'm going back to LA uh, on Tuesday. Um, but I will, I'll try and launch one this week and then I'll judge it when I get back. New LA home studio coming soon. Yep. Yep, I'm going to get on that ASAP. On your hand clap studio click bus, do you use Transient Master to make them snappy or draw them out for more of a flange? Um, I, what do I do? I think I will, I back the sustain off to get rid of the reverb of the clap. That's that's right. Even when you have it on fully dry in hand clap studio, there's still like some room noise with the clap. So I just pull that down with sustain. That's all it is. Who's your favorite living drummer? Oh man. Um, boh. I, I don't know. I'd have to get back to you on the Discord. There's so many. Um, yeah. Chris Dave's pretty good. He's pretty damn good. Um, Derek McKenzie. Shout Derek McKenzie from Jamiroquai. Solid drummer. Tony Royster, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. No gigs until March. Does this mean you'll stream more? Uh, I do have gigs. I, they're just not announced yet. I'm doing some New Year stuff. Um, but yeah, in, I think we're done in the UK. We've got something in Dubai coming up for the rugby. Yeah, we've got some gigs, but just not like warehouse raves and festivals. Not till next year. Yeah, there will be more streams. I don't see why not over winter, definitely. Yusef Day is a sick drummer. Sick drummer. Planning on making more breakdowns of the EP. I will. I will do that another day. All right, that is it for now. Um, can't believe we forgot Questlove for Fave Drummers. No, he, he is sick. He is sick. All right, um, I'm going to go. I will do a breakdown of another one of these tunes once I'm back in LA. And we'll try and do a little remix comp at some point as well. Um, good to see you guys again. Hope you got some useful tips. I must say, I've been getting recognized so much from doing this twitch thing now like that warehouse project about five people thanked me for doing tips and tricks and even today i was like at my manager's office some someone was having a meeting and even that guy was like oh thank you for the tips so uh, i'm really glad that it's all helping and uh you guys are getting some good shit out of this and hopefully make some bangers thank you thank you lots of love all right i'll leave it there peace out everyone Stream deck, always broken. <laughs>